We're driving a 2023 Toyota Sequoia. Coming up, we're going to unlock the mysteries of its cargo area. But first, information explosion. The Toyota Sequoia has entered its third generation as an all new model for 2023. It is a full size three row SUV. Let's begin with interior. I really like the combination of colors, the cream and the black. I think it looks really sharp to use a term old people use. Now you're on the trolley. <laughs> and I really like this wood. Let's run the graphic. Yes, it is wood. I should point out that we're driving the capstone trim, which is the fanciest rendition of Sequoia, which helps explain some of the elevated materials in here. Though I don't know if they're necessarily elevated enough to completely justify the price versus lesser trims. I do like the amount of storage in here and how it's flexibly laid out. There's lots of door storage, small compartments, lots of drink holders. This center console is cool because there's so many different compartments to it. There's this top part, there's this that can slide. Easy access to this area even when it's closed. You can actually take this plastic part out to create more space so that you can put a purse in here. And then if you go forward, you've got um, in this trim, you've got the wireless phone charging and then an adjacent slot where you could also set a phone if you felt so inclined. There's even a dash top storage spot here that I'll just temporarily put my phone to demonstrate it. That's good, because I did not get B-roll of that. Yay, many GoPros, <laughs> assuming they all record. By the way, for those who don't know, the Sequoia is essentially a Toyota Tundra, the newest Tundra, uh, but without a bed on the back and uh, room for humans back there. And just like in the Tundra, this area right here, the climate control, depending on the lighting conditions, it's hard to read the function of these switches right here because it's hidden underneath the climate control. So I do, however, like the fact that second row vents come standard. This is available in seven or eight passenger versions. Uh, in the second row, I fit well. And what's interesting is I'm so used to sliding second row seats. This doesn't have that. But the reason is that the uh, third row slides, which is a very unusual thing in that I don't know if that uh, has existed before this. And then you can also uh, recline the seats. And that gives you a ton of flexibility for um, apportioning legroom as necessary. Getting into the third row is very easy. The way the uh, second row flips forward creates a wide pass through. Once back in the third row though, headroom is pretty tight for someone of my height, five foot 10 with a long torso. There's enough knee room, but the butt to foot ratio, it's a little bit of a knee high seating position. I would reserve that for teenagers and children probably. The one we're driving is a seven passenger version, which means if you need to get to the third row, you can climb between the second row seats. If you go with the second row bench, however, I would personally miss one of the features we really like in the Ford Expedition, which is its tilt slide function. So you can have a car seat installed in the second row, tilt it forward with the car seat still installed and get into the third row. I also want to give Toyota praise because the front seats are typical Toyota lack of pressure points. I've got a ton of adjustability here, especially in the higher trim where you can uh, have a little bit of extra thigh extension, great lumbar support, very comfortable. In the beginning of the video, I teased we were going to unlock the mysteries of the cargo area. We got 22.3 cubic feet back there, which is good for the category, though I will mention that some of the uh, competitors for the Sequoia, things like the uh, Chevy Tahoe and the Ford Expedition, they both are offered in longer versions, the Expedition Max and the Chevy uh, Suburban. And there is only one size of Sequoia. Nonetheless, with the third row slid to its forward position, you have plenty of space back there for cargo. The cargo area, it is not in any way flat between the cargo floor and the uh, seats when they're in the folded position. That's why they have a platform, so you can create a, a relatively flat transition between it and the um, top of the seats. Basically, you've got a ton of different positions to move that divider in. We also noticed that those supports at the bottom are removable and the perfect thing to make a Monty Python style um, horse sound. Clippity clop. Last cargo note, this has a feature that we really, really like in the Expedition, which is flip up rear glass. I don't know why it went away, but for just reaching in and grabbing something quickly or not having all of your crap fill out if you have a very, very loaded up cargo area, that flip up rear glass is great. I kind of wish it extended a little further up for better clearance, but I, I love it nonetheless. Kiddo. 
How was it climbing in and out of this Toyota Sequoia? Oh yeah, we um, are still uh, getting used to the Sequoia. Knowing when that step is extended or not can be tricky. Have you hurt your shin yet, sweetie? Oh, so many times. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, we've all hurt our shins, but these are the things that happen when you have a car for one week. Anything um, pop out getting the car seat installed? The installation was very simple. One thing I did notice was that when I was attempting to buckle our girl in, I had to pull the car seat toward me each time because it was covering the receptacle for the seat belt. One more latch note, there are only latch points in the second row seats, not in the third row seats like we found in the Expedition. As for safety, neither the IIHS or the NHTSA have ratings yet for the Toyota Sequoia, though I suspect once they do, it will be quite positive. But what we do know is that eight airbags come standard along with a rich array of active driver assist, lane keeping assist, automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection uh, and intersection alert, plus full speed dynamic cruise control. And if you're concerned about visibility, blind spot warning is optional. What do we think family? Is the Toyota Sequoia family friendly? Family friendly. Yay. Sure is. Big family friendly. Rear window test. All the way down. Woo. Armrest test. Okay, I'm driving in a comfortable eight and four driving position, and I find the positioning of the inboard and outboard armrests quite favorable. I have no yeah, issues reaching with my elbows, and while they're not squishy, they're fairly firm, I feel like they're in that um, like uh, supportive mattress space where they're very comfortable, and uh, I feel like I'm getting the support I need, and I like them a lot. I'm gonna go 85% mm, inboard, 90% outboard. Hey! Would you like to see more videos like this where we review cars as a family, plus the occasional helicopter video? If you would, you're welcome to subscribe. Style! Let me give a quick shout out to the sponsor for this video, Flying Eyes Sunglasses. Yeah, you see me do this cool bendy thing and talk about how thin the temples are, but today I'm gonna talk about me! My preferred glasses are these matte black Kestrel Aviators with the mirrored rose lenses. I love this combination. I think it looks great. If you'd like to get Mike Spec Flying Eyes of your very own, you can click the link in the description below and save 10% when you use the promo code MICA. And real quick, just uh, show them what your glasses look like. Pretty cool. Magnetic tinted lenses on her ophthalmic line. That's it. Moving on. To me, the Toyota Sequoia looks brawny, but technical. What do you think? I think the side looks like it has eyebrows over the wheel well. Side brows? Side brows. I also like the really deep indentation in the door. Instead of just looking kind of big and slab sided, it looks like there's a lot of depth to it. Something I really like about the Sequoia is that depending on trim, it is offered in some really interesting uh, colors. They got that army green I like so much, um, that mesquite color, it's like a metallic brown, which is fun, and uh, lunar rock, which we've um, had previously in Toyotas. The other thing I like about the Sequoia is that it dresses up and dresses down depending on the trim. You can have a rugged iteration with that TRD Pro, a little more basic with the SR5, but we're driving the Capstone and it's the fanciest version and it expresses its fanciness with chrome, bright shiny chrome. If you look on the side, you'll see the chrome accents. It's got that uh, chrome piece along the bottom sides of the doors um, that kind of already highlights the natural body lines of the vehicle, but also says Capstone, lest you forget. And it also rides on 22 inch wheels and has that big distinct capstone grill. Overall, I like the look of the Toyota Sequoia, but what do you think? Are you talking to me or the audience? I'm talking to the audience. <laughs> do you guys like the look of the Toyota Sequoia? If so, if no, tell us in the comments. If you're curious what we're doing between YouTube videos, you can always give us a follow over on Instagram in motion. Driving the Toyota Sequoia, I find its ride quality to be soft and comfortable, though if you um, move it, you can kind of see that the fair oh, I've lost my microphone. The microphone falling off does help point out the fact that the body moves a fair bit. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, if you buy a Sequoia, this just becomes part of the tapestry of, of the drive experience. I don't know what percentage of Sequoia buyers will uh, spend all their time driving the mountains like we do on these constantly curving roads. But what I do know is that we spent a fair bit of time driving this on the freeway at uh, higher speeds. And like cruising on the freeway, it has a stable quality and the powertrain just hums right along. It's a twin turbocharged V6 paired with a hybrid system 
system. It's got an electric motor. It teams those two things with a 10-speed automatic transmission, and it all works pretty darn well. As I ease into the accelerator there, just a little bit, you get that immediate response from the electric motor. Notice I'm not flooring it. I'm, I'm so tempted to because I am a car reviewer by trade, but that's not really how people drive. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, floored, we a little bit of a delay as we wait for that downshift, but the electric motor does uh, kick in promptly. So you get an immediate response and then you get the full response shortly thereafter. Overall though, there is a lot of power to work with. The electric motor and that uh, twin turbo V6 working together does create some really strong pull. One thing I wanted to mention too, I had seen some complaints about brake feel, about it being mushy and okay, maybe, but I feel like I can use the brake pedal just fine. That's a pretty smooth stop right there. Oftentimes hybrid brakes are terrible. I don't have any problem using these brakes. All right, that's what I think, but what does Sweetie think? Evie's driving. How is this from a visibility standpoint? It does have rather large windows. Over my left shoulder, it has a huge B pillar that is blocking my view because I'm rather short and I have to ride closer to the wheel. I'm also getting a lot of hood out the front window. I wonder if I could raise my seat up a bit. I bet you can. Hey, that's better. The dimensions are a little bit confusing too, because as you look out over the hood line, unlike our Bronco, where it has those uh, trail sights where you know exactly where the wheels are, this has a, a long inward angled hood where it's like, I, I don't know exactly where that ends. That's a really good point. It's like you're a professional or something. The more time you spend with any vehicle, the more you'll understand its dimensions. Though Toyota does have some technology to make that easier, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. How's that steering feel? It's really really light. For a vehicle of this size, I was shocked at how easily it turns. With larger vehicles, sometimes you think, oh, it should be really like hefty. And it's like, it doesn't have to be. It can be whatever the engineers decide it should be. As we're making our way out here, this is sort of the number one scenario that you encounter that you hate, having to get out uh, through blind intersections in our little mountain town. How do you feel about the power? The power is good. I felt like I could get out ahead of traffic easily. And what about the sound it makes when it does it? It's very loud. It is. As you may recall, when we drove the Toyota Tundra, this has the exact same active sound control feature. So as you get on the accelerator a little bit, if you hear that V8 rumble, it is a lie. There's no V8 under there, there is no rumble, and it doesn't matter, it's fine. It adds a little bit of emotion as you're driving. The only thing I would say is that if you think you're getting the attention of other drivers, kind of like a motorcyclist might like, oh, they can hear me, they can't. They're not hearing the same soundtrack that you are. So don't think that your sound profile is the same on the outside as it is on the inside. As a lapsed motorcyclist, these are the things I think about. But overall, sweetie, are you feeling relatively comfortable driving the Sequoia? I think with time, I could get used to driving this around. For every, that's a pretty strong endorsement for a big vehicle. <laughs> I'm getting back in the driver's seat. Yeah, overall, I think people who like Sequoias will like driving this Sequoia. One thing I will add is that it has a thing called an automatic limited slip differential. And when you hear that, you think, oh, it's a limited slip differential. It is not. Oh. It is not a mechanical limited slip differential. It is a function where it uses the brakes to send power back to the other tire. And if you're actually trying to get power to the ground off road, that is way inferior to an actual limited slip differential. So do not be confused. You should also know that Toyota does offer an e-lock so an electronic locking rear differential, that very much gets power to the ground if you need to, and that's uh, available depending on uh, the trim you've got. But for our purposes, driving this thing around on some of our more casual trails, we've got 8.6 inches of ground clearance, we've got four wheel drive in this one, and uh, yeah, I think it did a pretty good job getting over some stuff that uh, lesser SUVs certainly couldn't. A Sequoia. Before moving on, let me quickly thank you. Thank you everybody who supports us in whatever way you choose to support us. That could be a thumbs up, that might be a nice comment, that could be supporting us on Patreon, that could be using the thanks button. Whatever you do, we appreciate it. Thank you. Moving forward to emotion factor. To me, the emotion factor of the Toyota Sequoia is, is grounded in its function, which is that you can carry your entire crew, seven or eight people total, and you can take them places, uh, perhaps adventurous places if you have the four-wheel drivers and version, and maybe even uh, really adventurous places if you get the uh, TRD Pro. I think there's also the potential for a sense of indulgence, depending on which trim you go with. Also, it's a Toyota, and people 
really like buying Toyotas because of the implied reliability and the fact that when you go off adventurous places with your crew, you won't get stranded there. What do you guys think? Is there an emotion factor here? If you're feeling emotionally drawn to buy a Toyota Sequoia of your very own, I bet you're gonna need to sell your current car first. If you'd like to know how much your current car is worth or how much you should pay for your upcoming Toyota Sequoia, click the Kelly Blue Book pricing link in the description below. Kelly Blue Book will tell you everything you need to know so you pay the right price. Moving on to remarks. Remark number one, infotainment. An eight inch screen comes standard with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone connectivity. We have the 14 inch unit here. Initially, we were put off by the lack of a home screen, but I think we've really learned to like this. The graphics are really crisp and clear. This does require smartphone connectivity to get everything you want out of it. Especially if you do not pay for the uh, embedded nav, and it defaults to that screen. So when you start the vehicle up, if you don't have navigation it just tells you hey you should probably get navigation one thing i do love on this screen is the 360 cam when you slow it automatically brings it up whenever it thinks you might need it there's a ton of different angles it's vivid there's no ambiguity about what you're looking at uh, it's a really great system all right we should talk about engine choices when i say engine choices i mean there is one engine to choose it's that 3.5 liter twin turbocharged hybrid v6 you can get it in two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive is available for $3,000 across the board. By the way, if you're looking at that fuel economy figure, that is more efficient than the Ford Expedition we drove recently. And if you're wondering about tow, it maxes out at 9,520 pounds in the SR5 two-wheel drive trim. And it's cool because you can also get an integrated trailer brake controller. Sweetie. Yes. Can I give you a trim recommendation? Sure. Hooray! Our trim recommendation is based on which trim will give you the features you would regret not buying, but at the lowest possible price. I would recommend getting the base SR5 trim for about $58,300. It has eight-way power heated front seats with two-way lumbar support, that 360-degree camera system we love, three-zone climate control, and smart key access, a feature I will not live without. As for competitors, you got the Jeep Wagoneer, Chevrolet Tahoe, and the Ford Expedition. And if you're curious what we thought about the Ford Expedition, click that link. Did we miss any remarks? If so, tell us in the comment section. Synopsis. In thinking about the essence of the Toyota Sequoia, they took a popular formula and made it even better with a clever redesign and more technology. To me, it is the bird buddy bird feeder of full-size three-row SUVs. Uh, you ever have a bird feeder with a video camera attached to it? Pretty sweet. Now well, that's living. Family, I think we've done a good job reviewing the Toyota Sequoia. May I have a five? Whoa, hard five. And a five, medium five, and you, come get your high five. Ah.